good evening. Um, this is the MS Mental Wellness Chat, and so um, this is a monthly chat that um, MS Views and News has brought to the MS community since COVID. So we're almost about like two and a half, um, or actually more than two and a half years into the monthly mental wellness chat. And so it has been a great program and has offered a lot of um, dialogue and opportunity for people to connect and, um, and also to learn a little bit of um, information and resources too. So um, thank you to MS News and News for um, making this program possible. Um, we, it's a program that's been necessary and needed and, um, and I know it's, um, it's been helpful. So tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about um, taking action on the things that um, we can and um, and how do we let go of the things that we can't so when things happen what can we control what can we not control and when we're feeling out of control of things how can we cope with that um, and so um, a couple of things before we get started um, on the actual topic is I like to um, share a little bit of information about myself in case you're brand new to um, the mental MS mental wellness chat so um, my name is Jessica Thomas. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I've been a therapist um, that has worked with people living with chronic disease and um, has specialized in multiple sclerosis. I am currently the director of patient education for the Neuroendocrine Tumor Research Foundation, but I stay very involved and very engaged in the MS community still. And, um, and, and I've been leading this MS mental wellness chat um, for a good um, time since it's began actually. So there's a couple of things about me. Um, another thing to note about me is I have MS. So while I, um, I'm a clinical social worker, I have a lot of professional experience, I, um, I have MS. So there's a, um, something kind of interesting about me in the sense that I understand it professionally, but I understand some of this personally too. And, and I think that's important to share. How do you feel when, um, when things are out of your control? So I want us to be honest here, um, uh, just honest, honest, to go to the question box and kind of tell me how do you feel when, um, when things are out of your control? And um, I'll get us started. Um, I, I tend to um, like to be planned and scheduled and routined. And when those things are not in order, I tend to feel a little bit, um, actually a lot of it uncomfortable because I like to sort of know what's going on. Um, so we have Linda who says that um, she can feel frustrated. Um, James, um, like, um, like I'm in the toilet bowl and somebody flushed, you feel like kind of you're out of control and you're spinning. Um, Monique says frustrated. Um, Jeffrey said aggravated. Um, Mary Lee says I tend to feel helpless. Um, Carol says stressed, upset, nervous. Jill said, um, hi Jill. Um, Jill said angry. Um, Antoinette says a little anxious as um, I'm the one to be proactive with everything. So um, it sounds like um, Antoinette or Tony, you're a little bit like me. You like to be in charge and in, um, in control of things. And, um, and so it can make you a little bit anxious. Dion says, depending on what it is, but I can be frustrated. So often, um, you know, I could ask a lot of people this question, but I think the reality is, is that often we do not feel comfortable when we are out of control. Um, Richard also says, I get very aggressive spasms almost daily, which makes me at my wit's end. So, it, um, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, like areas of MS, other areas of our um, life that causes the, you know, things to be out of control because there's some symptoms we might not be in control of and there's areas of life that we're not in control of um, often. And then um, Terry said, I'm frustrated, but um, think other people can cope better. And um, we're going to talk about coping today. And um, Dion says, um, I try to let it roll off my back. That's a good strategy. And we're going to talk strategies. Um, Aaron, uh, Eric said, um, like, um, curling in a ball with, um, head on pillows. So, um, yeah, so it kind of feels like you kind of trying to self-preserve and protect. Um, hi, Stuart. It's good to see you. Um, I've got, we've got Stu on here as well. Um, Nora says, if, um, things make sense, I um, feel like I can handle them. If they, um, if they can't make sense, um, or they're out of the ordinary, I um, I can't handle, and it causes some challenges. Jim says, depends on the situation, from either mad to sad, um, and Linda says, I focus on the things I can control instead. Okay, that is great, because we're going to talk a little bit about that. So as you can see, you guys are not very different from one another. Um, you know, I like to say that you're not alone, and we, we're all very individual in how we um, respond and react to things but the truth is is that um when we feel out of control it's an uncomfortable feeling all um often so we're going to move on to our next slide 
So we're going to talk a little bit about reasons and things that can cause a lack of control. And before we um, settle into, um, I, many of you are going to have lots of things, and I'm going to have a couple of things to share that um, will kind of help bridge some things that, um, some connections to things that are out of control. But we're going to go to our next slide, and we're going to talk about what are some of the things that you feel that you have the lack of control of, and how does this impact you? So this might be big things, this might be small things, but and um, this may be related to your disease or not be related to your disease. But what are um, some things that you feel like you have a lack of control of sometimes? And I will get us started. Okay, so um, so a small thing that I feel like I have a lack of control of sometimes is um, is time management and being on time. Like being on time is really important to me and I can control my ability to be on time, but I can't control my family, my husband, my son, et cetera. And that, um, that's um, something that, um, that can be challenging. A bigger thing that I feel like I don't have control of sometimes is, um, is sometimes I don't, um, I recently had to make a treatment decision and I didn't have control over a um, side effect risk that I had. Um, I wish I did, but I didn't have control over that. That was, um, and that led to a treatment decision. And so um, that was challenging. Okay, so um, we've got it started here. Um, so um, Carol says others, um, husband's behavior, and that's fair, Carol. I just talked about um, time management with mine. Jeffrey said, depending on others, um, can be um, something that you have a lack of a feeling of lack of control of. Um, Nora says other people's problems and work issues. Um, sometimes it can cause stress and challenges. Jill says uh, my appetite. I understand that too. Sometimes um, Wayne says um, at times my balance. Yeah, not feeling like that's an area that you, that you wouldn't have control over. Absolutely. Um, so um, as we can see, and how does that impact you? Like um, so. I know for me, um, my things cause frustration. And we talked about lack of control um, in the chat box before. Um, Dion said, likewise with the treatment decision. Um, Eric says, fatigue. Um, so there's there's aspects of our lives, and some of it's going to be related to MS, and some of it's not going to be related to MS, that actually causes um, some lack of control. And this is um, this is true. And then we have um, Stuart that says, how um, others react to situations that I can't control. So yeah, that's very fair. So there's things that we all have in our own life that um, gives us a sense of um, or lack of control in it, um, and often will connect us to those feelings that we mentioned earlier. I'm going to mention a couple of other things that um, that can cause sort of like that sense of lack of control, and we're going to go through these a little bit faster because I think we all understand that there's areas of our life that we don't have control, and then we're going to spend more time on the tools because I think that is a lot more functional for everybody. But we're going to move on to the next slide real quick, um, and we're going to start with stress. So um, often um, stress can give us a, um, a sense or um, lack of control and it can cause stress can cause overwhelming feelings. Um, it can um, also be just very overwhelming in general. And um, you can um, stress makes us feel a lot of different ways. And we've talked about this um, on the mental wellness chat before. But stress can be um, related to your disease. It can be related, related to relationships, to family, to work to um, to other things that you do in your life. And so stress often makes us um, feel out of control. So that's why it's really important to manage stress because if we manage our stress, we feel a little bit more in control of our lives. And stress kind of exacerbates or makes um, those things feel worse. Um, and we're gonna talk about coping soon. So right now we're just talking about challenges. So hang tight while we talk through the challenges. So we're gonna move on. To our next slide, and we're going to just mention health. So health is one of those things that we often can feel um, out of control with. Um, you know, people, um, you know, it's it's so common to um, worry about our, you know, our mental health and our physical health, um, especially when there's the health condition. And, um, and often um, with um, with our health, we have, you know, we realize that there are areas that we can control, but there's sometimes areas that we can't control. So I'm going to, I don't have a chat box, like a slide for this, but I want to sort of just call out real quick. What's an area of MS that you can control and an area of MS that you cannot control? 
and I will get us started. So an area of um, my MS that I can control is I can control management of some of my symptoms by sleeping well. But I cannot control that sometimes my fatigue is too much, even if I sleep well. So that's it's kind of confusing there. So I can um, I can control that I can manage the severity of the um, of the symptoms by sleep, but I still can't control that I'm going to have challenges because of fatigue. And that might be cognitive challenges or um, it might even be physical fatigue. So let's see. Um, Stuart says stress is my middle name. Um, and or and Stuart says um, can control knowledge absolutely. So we can control how we learn, what we do, what where we spend our time. You guys could control that you're here tonight, and like major accolades for that because you are here taking action, learning. Um, and um, we have let's see. Terry says can control myself alone and not so much control others around. That's very true. Um, Linda said, I can control by staying away from outside triggers. I can't control when MS shows up, but I listen to it. So um, so that's a really good thing. So you can control listening to your MS and kind of responding, um, et cetera. Um, for example, I was tired today before this program. I took a nap. I listened to my MS, but I couldn't control that I was tired. Um, so um, so Linda, that is great that you, um, you, control, you, know, you can't control your MS shows up, but you can control by listening to it. And um, controlling by staying away from outside triggers. Carol says, pacing myself for exercise, not fatigue. That is great. Nora says, can control um, by taking her DMT and getting infusions, but can't always control stress. The truth is, is stress is going to be around us all the time. It's constant. Um, we can't control a lot of stress. We can control some stress by creating boundaries, et cetera, but we can't control that stress is going to be around. Stress is always going to be around. We can um, control how we can um, how we approach it. Nora says, um, can't control brain not keeping up with me. So those are very good examples. But health can be a very um, stressful aspect of, um, of managing um, control because with MS, there are areas that we can control and there are a lot of areas that we can't. And I like Linda's example. You know, you can um, you can't control some of your MS, but you can control listening to your body or um, the um, person who said exercise. You know, um, I can't control stress, but I can control exercise. I can't control fatigue, but I can control the things I do to help the fatigue, if that makes sense. So um, we're going to move on to our next slide as we do that. I'm going to take some water because I am so thirsty. Okay. And um, work. So for those of you that are working, often um, there are things in our work environment that um, that make I mean that are kind of outside of our control. So um, so sometimes that might be um, pressures or demands of work. Um, it might be, and this could even apply if you are not working, if you are um, volunteering, or if um, just other areas of your life. Um, but there's um, there's times in our life where um, th things can be over consuming um, with work and, and often there's things that are out of our control. Um, sometimes it might be that we're really busy, over scheduled, et cetera. Um, we have Wayne here. I just wanted to keep up with our chat who said um, trouble with educating the outside world on um, what dealing with MS is really like. OK. So we're going to I'm going to what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to take a pause on that and I'm just going to remember I'm going to write Wayne I'm going to write your name down so we can um, can revisit that before we end. Um, and then Dion says I can't control stress but I can control whether or not to engage. I love this. You've been participating in the MS mental wellness chat for a while and, and that's a message that we talk about. We talk about creating boundaries like what are we going to give our energy? What are we not going to give our energy in terms of stress management? And Dan says, I try not to overcommit my, commit myself. Very good. And I think that's a really important thing because when we feel overcommitted, often we feel out of control. So we're going to move on to our next slide. And we're going to talk about relationships. Um, this is one area that um, that is tough because we can control what we put into a relationship and we cannot control what the other person puts into the relationship. So often if relationships are... Um, unhealthy or unbalanced, um, often we can feel out of control um, because they take, who, whatever the type of relationship, they take two people to be um, fully invested for them to work. 
And, um, and it's important to note that often when relationships are unhealthy or unbalanced, and when they're unbalanced, there are things and tools and e through communication, maybe going to see a counselor or just really effort that, um, that might be able to help with that. But when our relationships are unbalanced or they're, um, unhealthy or even toxic, so to say, um, what can happen is, is you can feel very out of control because you can only control your part of that. And if, if that's the case, I, I really encourage you to talk to somebody. Um, re relationships are the cornerstone um, of, you know, of our lives and we need them to be healthy or um, if they're not healthy and they're creating a lot of outside stress, I think it's important to, um, to see a counselor. So we're going to move down. Um, and then um, we have Wayne here, the dreaded misconception of what having MS is really like. OK, so we'll, we'll definitely talk about that in the end. So um, tragedy. So I'm um, not going to spend a lot of time here. But if you've ever experienced a tragic life event, um, I even would put um, crisis um, or even um, the pandemic, even the past couple of years, you know, that um, if you can reflect and, 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 and we can all just kind of think about what the past couple of years was like um, during COVID, especially in the beginning and the, um, the sense of, um, of concern and uneasiness that we all felt, we were all really out of control in many ways. We, we had little to no control in, in terms of the world and what was going on around us beyond what we could do for ourselves. And, um, and I think that's, you know, an important thing to note when things like that happen, that we have a great sense of, you know, not being in control. And, and that's when we really need to hone in and, and focus on the things that we can control. And, um, and which um, MS News and News was so good to offer some really great programs during that period of time to really help address um, those feelings because it was so difficult for many of us. So we're going to move on to our next slide and we're going to start talking um, techniques. We're going to talk strategies. What to do when we feel like things are out of control? How do we take action? Um, so I. I don't like the idea of like letting go of things that we can't control or letting go of things. I would like to think that um, maybe another way to frame this is like, how can we let down or uh, like set down lightly the things that we can't control and focus on the things that we can. So that's the visual that I want to give you because I don't think we can just like let go of it because um, some things are too hard. They're too stressful. And the type of, um, internal imbalance that they create is too much. We can't just let go of it. That's easier said than done. And I don't even think that's really fair or realistic sometimes. But how can we let it down lightly? And what can we do to um, to move forward? How can we take action? So we're going to go to the um, next slide. And that will be a chat box. And I am going to ask you, um, what is something that you do when you're um, when you feel like things are out of your control? I want you to tell me the positive and negative and, and be real here. Um, and I will, um, I'll get us started. So um, one of the negative things I do when I feel like um, things are out of control, I'm snappier. I'm just not as fun to be around. So, um, so maybe that's something. Um, and then a positive thing that I do, I tend to go outside or take a walk or do something to kind of shift my perspective. So um, often it will go outside. I might look at the stars if it's at night or um, during the day. I might sit out on the um, on the porch and just kind of um, recenter myself and reground myself a little bit. Um, let's see what people are saying. OK, so we've got. Um, we have Jim here that says knowing when um, when for me and. And not participating in everything. So, um, so that is great. Yeah. So, if you're feeling like things are out of control, kind of knowing when to say um, no and um, and not overly committing yourself or overly participating yourself. So, you're creating boundaries essentially, which is really great. Um, we have Carol that says disconnect, remove myself from the environment. That is a really um, great strategy. Um, we have. Um, Maddie here that says meditation. Um, he also says cannabis. I'm a, this is legal and not legal in some states, so we're not going to go there. But um, but meditation and um, and is one of the things that he does. Um, Wayne says I pray and simply reflect. 
And Jim says, positive, do mindfulness practice, um, and the negative is crawl into a shell. I think we all have positive coping mechanisms and we have negative ones too. Um, some people might have like a glass of wine or two or too many and sometimes is a negative way when they're feeling out of control. Um, some people, you know, may exercise, some people may call a friend, you know, so we have positive and negative ones and we all tend to have one or two in each category. Um, Anne Marie says, I take a step back, evaluate the situation and think of what I can control and what I can't. That is really great when you can kind of really just sort of like tease through it, because often when um, when we're feeling out of control, it feels very messy. And when we can step back and look at it, we can can weed through it and, and look at it differently. Dion says, I'm negative. I may be snappy, um, positive. I'm more um, likely to be aware and apologize quickly. Very good. And um, Terry says isolate and um, would be one of the negative ones. And then positives, I call a friend. Um, and that, that is a positive thing to do. So um, you can continue to contribute to this list if you want. But we're going to start some um, some coping tools, things that you can do. Um, and we'll start with the next slide, which is pause and take a break. So we had someone on here that um, that shared this technique. Um, yeah, if you um, if you can pause and take a break when you're feeling out of control, this is important. So there is an acronym that I like to use, and ironically, um, I, I, I attended the um, MS um, Wellness Summit this past weekend in Atlanta, and Megan um, Weigel, I believe is how you say her last name, had um, shared this acronym, and I've shared it actually in the MS Mental Wellness Chat, but it's a really good one, so it's worth sharing again, and it's called STOP. So if you think of like a stop sign and the S stands for literally stopping yourself. So if you're feeling out of control, feeling kind of that frustrated, that worried, that um, edgy, like any of those feelings we talked about in the beginning, I want you to stop. And then the T stands for take a breath. And often it's good to take a deep breath in um, through, um, through your nose, the inhale through your nose and exhale out through your mouth and do it maybe a couple of breaths. The O is observe. Observe how you're feeling. And the P stands for plan and proceed. And how I like to define that is thinking about what is the next thing I need to do? So you don't have to make big plans, but maybe um, the next, maybe that next thing that you have to do is a small step. But that's one of the things that you can do during um, pausing and taking a break. You can also take a pause and a bigger break. You can cultivate a calmer environment. And that's important. You, do, you might not be able to control the chaos around you, but you might be able to remove yourself from the chaos. You might be able to sit outside, find a quiet area or a quiet room. Um, you might be able to listen to music that might um, give you a break from whatever it is going around you. Or um, you might be able to practice breathing exercises as well. And so um, there's lots of little ways that you can pause and take a break. And you may have a strategy or a way that you consider pausing and taking a break that might be different than what I talked about. If you have anything special that you do, feel free to, to chime in um, in the, the question box and I'll kind of keep up with it. We're gonna move on to our next slide. And we're gonna talk about um, practicing self-compassion. This is really important. Choosing to be kind to ourselves. Often when we are feeling out of control, our moods are not that great, right? And, um, and when our moods are not good, um, we tend to be hard on ourselves as well. And so um, what is one way, and this is a chat box question actually, it's just, I don't have a slide for it. What is one way that you are kind to yourself when you are feeling like things are out of control or they are stressful or chaotic? What is one way that you are kind to yourself? So we've got, um, we got started here. Maddie says, play music and draw. That is great. I know one of the things that I do to, to be kind to myself is, um, is I often will, um, will give myself the opportunity to, um, to look at like an affirmation card, um, something that is empowering, or I'll look at quotes. Um, and so for example, I actually brought some, um, 
some here and these are some affirmation cards. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them at lots of little, um, lots of stores, but I, I'll kind of scroll through them and I'll find one that, um, that stands out to me. So this one right here says, um, I am constantly learning and growing. And then this one says, today I choose happiness. This one says, I'm free from anxiety and worry with each deep breath. So I find things that help to um, to reinforce some of the messages that I might need to hear. So we have some participation here. Okay, so Linda says, I give myself a facial. That is a really great thing to do, and um, a little bit of TLC. Jim um, says, um, I say it could be worse, and that's very true, um, that sometimes that perspective can help, and we'll talk about um, perspective and mind shift too. Um, Stuart says he jams to loud rock. We um, music is really helpful, and one of the um, the stars, the ocean, and music can be very healing properties for us. Um, Anne says I like to make up songs and laugh at how silly they are. That is that's great. Um, Maddie says read a good book. Terry says make a good healthy dinner. That is awesome. Um, Wayne says agreeing that MS isn't having MS isn't my fault. It's true. Um, Eric says, reminding myself that this is not my fault. Very good. And then Carol says, nice, nice bath, dinner out with daughter, thankful for what I have, my children. And then um, Tony says, art always helps and dancing. So practicing self-compassion, practicing kindness to yourself. Um, and then we have another, um, Dion says, I try to reframe the situation and look for the positives. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, mind shift changes as well and how they help so you see that practicing self-compassion is um is something that's important to do and you guys already have some tools that you use i want to kind of reinforce and uh, remind you that sometimes we have tools and we don't use them so to remember that we'll move on to our next slide and we're going to talk a little bit about mind shift um trying to change your perspective so we're going to start off with this last um message from and dion i try to reframe the situation and look for the positive so that is a really um a really great lead into this so um when things are out of our control and um, it may help to look at kind of what is in our control we have had that in the chat box and um, the question box someone has mentioned that tonight um because that can help our perspective a little bit but then also we can look at um choose to look at things a little bit differently so one of the um the things that um i think is good how is how can i shift my mind so um what is another way that i can look at this is a question that i would maybe ask myself or ask somebody i was working with um what is a different way that you could look at this um you know allowing yourself to um to see maybe there's a positive in it or what are the positives in it last mental wellness chat we talked about um and I just happened to have it right here and um, because of last we uh, last month when we did this um this gratitude jar and we talked about like the lemon drops being like the um the lemon drops in this jar would essentially be the things that um create a sense of la or lack of control it might be ms it might be a treatment change it might be symptoms it might be stress with work or stress with um within a relationship etc and uh, these little pearls are like all these good little things that happen throughout the week so it might be like the weather was really nice today or you had a good phone call or you read a good book or um or you listen to a great song like so and and those little pearls add up and it's it's so incredible that we always have lemon drops here but we can kind of figure out how to balance out those lemon drops and those things in life with the things that are um, that are good. And when we practice gratitude, that's actually one of the ways that we can change our, um, our perspective as well. Also talking with someone I think can really help with changing your perspective because often we can get locked into um, how we are looking at something only. And, um, and so talking with a trusted person or trusted friend can help because they can offer another perspective as well. So we've got Carol, um, that says um focuses on what she can do instead of what i can't do and that is golden that is a really great thing to do so we're going to move on that's timely for this next um slide right here taking control of things that you can change so uh, this is um as i was preparing this slide i was thinking about um something that i um brought up during um a mental wellness chat a long time ago um during COVID, and it was the idea of um of navigating care versus worry 
when um, when we worry about things, it's more of a passive kind of action. And it's very negative. It creates a lot of stress, a lot of tension, and often um, there's not much we can do. But when we transition to a place of care, so instead of just worrying about this, I'm gonna choose to just to care about this. What you're doing is you're switching it to a positive energy that feels positive. And then you're looking at the things that you can change and that you can control. And you're doing that from a place of care. So um, this is a really important game changer. Um, and we've we've had a couple of people um, chime in in the um, just um, in the question box, just sharing this that when you look at what you can control versus what you can't, it makes a really big difference. And um, and so if you let's stop here for a second and go to the chat box. What is um, Let's see, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, when you wake up in the morning and say that your MS um, symptoms are um, are bothering you more. Um, I know this is different for everybody, but I, but I will say, you know, I know that um, some days are worse. I, I, I know for myself, if you're waking up, if you wake up and you have a, um, a day where your MS symptoms are screaming, maybe, maybe you have more pain, maybe you're ha you have more apathy. It's just hard to get up and get moving, um, maybe physically and mentally. What is something that you can control? What is something that you can do to help navigate during that time? I know I can't control some of my MS symptoms, but I can control kind of what I do. So, um, so for myself, I um, I try to um, to be kind to myself. That's one thing that I can control. Another thing that I can control is focusing on the things that I can do versus the things I can't. And I'll explain this um, because that's kind of what um, what this slide is about. Often our um, our our lives often are run by to-do lists. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, I would show you my planner, but it has a lot of things on it right now, and it's it's kind of um, hidden and be uncomfortable to, to to dig out. But you would see a list of to-do um, items, and it's pretty long. Um, and sometimes that can be overwhelming. So on days that I'm not feeling good, instead of looking at the things that I have to do, I look at the things that I can do. And that um, that mind shift really does help me. So I might put, I got the mail from the mailbox. I might, um, I took my dog out to go to the bathroom. I didn't take her on a walk, but I took her out to go to the bathroom. Finding the things that you did do so you can kind of allow yourself to focus on the things that you could control for that day. So um, Wayne says, um, my attitude not being a grunt. Um, I wish I could share emojis. He has a funny emoji after this one. Carol says, small steps, breaking things down. That's a great strategy. Um, Antoinette says, I um, I have prayer um, and, and gratitude first. Great strategies. Um, Linda says, I take a rest day and push it off for a day after or a day after that. Absolutely. Um, with MS, we have to learn to pivot sometimes and, um, and move things forward. Um, Dion says, I um, try to adjust my mindset and do the best I can and be okay with that. That's that um, giving yourself grace, kindness, and um, and permission, which is so very important. We'll see if anyone else. So as we get going, if you, um, as, here's a really great one. Um, Carol, thank you for saying this. Asking for help. Um, this is a hard thing. And we've talked about this in the mental wellness chat before that asking for help sometimes help can be sometimes tricky or feels uncomfortable. But asking for help is sometimes something that you can do to control. And I know with even within my family system, um, I give you my examples because I know them well, but they're also very easy to come up with. Um, but in my family system on days that I'm not feeling um, well, I ask my husband to to do a little bit more and help out in different areas. Um, and, and that really does help because that's something that's within my control. OK, we're going to move on to um, our next slide. So being confident um, in your decisions. So when things are out of our control, it's important for us to um, to be able to navigate and to accept um, some level of discomfort because it feels uncomfortable. 
And sometimes we have to make decisions. We, um, we've seen in the question box, we've had people that have um, said, I'm, I, I don't commit over to commit to things. I, um, you know, kind of um, only manage what I can. Um, you know, being confident, um, or if you even, and I'm going to put this off until tomorrow, um, you are the expert on you and your MS. Nobody else is the expert on it. You are the expert on you and your MS. And so um, when things are out of control, things that are related to your MS, not related to your MS, kind of navigating what you need to do for you and letting yourself be confident in what you choose to take care of yourself. And, um, and so it's important. Other people may doubt that, but, but your ability to take care of yourself and know and to give yourself the grace that you need to give is, is really priority here. So um, I call this also choosing courage and being brave because sometimes um, being, um, being brave is really important to be able to, to do what you need to do. And it might go against the grain of what you want to do um, or what other people want from you. So um, Stuart says needing to plan and um, follow lists, that, that is a great strategy. Um, and Dion says, I let my husband know how I'm feeling. Um, that, is, um, that is really great. Communication is so important. Um, and the, and that's so funny, Jill. Um, and then um, Dion says, communication is so important. Um, and that is very much. So being confident in your decisions, communicating them to the people that you um, that love you and care about you. But giving yourself, um, you know, the the um, permission uh, to know that you need to do what you need to do to take care of yourself when things feel out of control and you need to stabilize. And then the next slide is talking it out. So this is a really important thing. So we talked about, you know, there's a lot of um, things that can cause us to feel out of control in our lives. And some of the things are small. Some of the things are big. But if you're feeling like you are stuck in a state of not being able to um, access some area of control or you're not able to access some of the um, coping mechanisms that we talked about, talking it out would be very helpful. And even if you don't have to wait and talking it out might actually might be one of your first things that you decide to do. And this could be talking with a friend. Um, this could be talking with uh, like a trusted friend. It could be talking with um a professional, um, it, you know, could be, you know, going to see a counselor, a licensed clinical social worker, a therapist, etc. But talking it out can really help because through talking it out, often we can identify the things that um, that are creating that sense of control and um, lack of control. Because sometimes um, we don't even know there might be so much going on that we're not even able to really identify or weed through um, some of that. So talking helps you do that. But then also talking helps you to really identify, OK, these things over here I have to lay down because they're, they are um, things I can't control. But I can control these things over here. And so a, um, a professional can help you do that if you struggle um, with that sometimes. Also, journaling can help, and I um, I want to mention journaling because every once in a while we'll have someone um, mention journaling because they do that, and and that's really important. Journaling sometimes can give you clarity too, so um, and that might be a way that you want to process through things. So, um, and journaling does not replace counseling, but that might be an introspective way to kind of get everything out, kind of weed through it, and kind of say, okay, this is what I can control, and this is what I can't. Um, but definitely talking through those feelings are really important. Um, Carol says um, that she's making sure she's respecting herself first. That is a really, really great, um, great thing to share. And I am glad that you said that, Carol. Thank you, because I think we need to respect ourselves first. If we can't take care of ourselves, we can't navigate situations well. And we'll move on to our next slide. And this is um, thinking positively. So I want to um, first preface this by saying this is not a toxic positivity. This does not mean that everything is rainbows and gumdrops because life is not rainbows and gumdrops. We talked about stress is kind of all around us. It can be kind of um, everywhere we look. It's an, um, It can be a lot. And so thinking positively is not about that. It's not saying, um, it's not minimizing the reality of things that when they're out of our control. Um, so these are some strategies, I think. Practicing a positive inner voice. 
this is a good strategy because sometimes when we're feeling out of control or um, feeling stressed, um, we tend to easily access the negative voice. Um, the voice that um, I mean, maybe it's my fault or um, or just the, the voice that feels angry about everything. So so the positive voice um, the proactive um, practicing of the positive inner voice is, you know, what is something I could say nice to myself right now? What is something that I could say or what would I tell a friend? If a friend approached me with this situation right now, what would I tell them? Because often we'll give our friends that positive inner voice, that encouraging piece of information, that um, those words we need to hear, but we won't give them to ourselves. We'll give ourselves the negative stuff. And so I'm challenging you to, to think about the, um, the positive inner voice. Then also um, thinking about um, how can I welcome in some joy right now? Or um, going back to those lemon drops and pearls, like how can I practice gratitude? Because when I practice gratitude, while that doesn't change a situation, it doesn't take it away, it allows you to reshift what you're looking at, even if it's temporary. Choosing the bright side. Again, not toxic positivity here, but allowing yourself, giving yourself some space to look at something a little bit different. One question I like to um, ask myself and when I was um, practicing as a therapist, I would ask um, people I worked with, is there a positive side here? And sometimes there's not, at least at first. But if we dig deep, is there something positive from this? Um, sometimes um, it is, um, you know, it's, it's not positive um, when there is a, um, a relationship that dissolves, like a marriage, um, you know, goes into separation and divorce. And it's hard to think of anything positive about that. Um, and, and sometimes it can, it, it's really challenging. But eventually, sometimes, you know, we might be able to see, well, you know, if, if that person didn't want to, to live with me as I am now, maybe that's not the person I need to spend the rest of my life with. Doesn't take away that it's not hard. I'm, I'm not saying that. But, um, but there might be a positive side that, you know, maybe there's a, another part of, um, maybe I want to spend my time with people that, and that I want to grow with. You know, there's, let's practice thinking positively. Okay. So I'm going to ask you as a group, someone, and I will just let the first person tell, um, Give me a challenge. First person that gives me a challenge will use it. Something that is frustrating or um, or difficult can be for you personally or just, um, and if we don't have. Okay. When somebody is being mean. How can you change or look at that differently? I will get us started. So when somebody is being mean, I often will say to myself that that usually is not about me. That doesn't sound super positive, but it's a deflection. Um, and um, Anne Marie says, person may be having a bad day. It's a different way to look at it, right? I usually say it's not about me because it usually isn't. Um, it's 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 bigger than you. Um, if someone's being mean, um, you can choose to um, find um, find something that's that's actually nice about them. That's kind of hard to dig, um, and we won't do this example too long. But that they're having a bad day, kind of accepting that that this is not about you. So that was our example. So we're gonna um, move on to our next slide, and we're gonna talk about distraction. So when you're um, feeling out of control, feeling like things are stressful, and um, what are some things that you can do to distract yourself? So there's short-term distraction activities, there's long-term distraction activities. Here we're gonna, um, I'm gonna talk about hobbies. So hobbies are great ways to take your minds off to things. We, we talked about like small things you can do, and, and some people mentioned like going outside and, um, and um, listening to music and et cetera. But what are some hobbies that you can do if you have a stressful period in your life that you can, a hobby that you can tap into that helps you to kind of refocus? 
So we have um, exercising and reading from Dion. Um, Anne Marie said gardening inside. I like, love that. Um, Carol says gardening and exercise. Um, Eric says relearning Spanish with Duolingo. That is really cool. And that's good for cognition too, to, um, that dual plasticity. Um, Anne Marie says, um, my mom said, or Tony says puzzles. Um, Dion says baking, um, walking, my dog and gardening, singing and dancing, says Linda. Um, Jim says exercise in some way. So, um, and I bet Maddie would say music because he does music. Um, so, I, you know, there's a lot of things that we can do that can create distraction. So um, it's important. We don't want to distract ourselves um, totally from the reality of what we're facing. But these hobbies actually provide a level of reprieve and respite from stress and, um, and can help us to... Um, to kind of create a calmer environment for ourselves that kind of helps us to um, access um, creativity. And, and sometimes, um, so Carol says reading, um, and that is all we have for that. So we'll kind of keep on with that. We're gonna go to Wayne's question real quick. So Wayne, um, you know, sometimes has trouble educating the outside world what dealing with MS is really, what it's really like. I would like for everyone to go to the chat box uh, or go to the question box and to um, to put in what is something that you have done to help educate others on what having MS is like. Um, this is not going to be perfect, Wayne, and this is probably not going to solve the um, the challenge at hand. But this might give you some strategies. I know for myself, um, one of the things so I'll get us started, um, as I always say. Um, during COVID, um, you know, people generally, um, you know, there was a high amount of people um, and COVID still is here, but there was a high amount of people that did not have MS that got COVID too. And they would talk about fatigue. And, and I use that as an opportunity to talk about MS fatigue because the way they just, I have not had COVID, but the way they had COVID and they, um, and, and described the fatigue that they had with COVID sounded very similar to how I feel sometimes. And so that allowed them to, um, to get um, some level of empathy. Um, another um, thing is, um, is leading into resources and education. So if these are people that you love or that love you or care about you, inviting them to educational programs like through MS Views and News. It might be that um, they're starting to do some in-person programs. I'd, I'd bring, bring someone with you um, to an in-person program or um, leaning into some of the education that's in, um, out in the community through the MS organizations. So we had, um, Dion said, shared literature um, from the MS Society. Um, Carol, and, and I'll say from MS Views and News, um, Carol said, uh, Facebook sharing information on awareness, um, comparing the myelin sheath to a um, bad charger cord on a cell phone and exposure to copper is like nerve damage. That's a really great example. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, and I, I recommend, you know, that's how I usually talk about MS is that example of, of, of um, the charger cord on a phone. Um, because we know that when our char the charger cord is broken or if there's ru the rubber is missing off of it, all of a sudden our ch cell phone chargers don't work. We, under we can really understand an, like how the cell phone chargers need to work perfectly because we're also phone centric these days. Jim says listening and then sharing an, an example. Um, and, and I think that's um, great. And also requiring, you know, I, I think this requires patience because, you know, um, we can't control how other people are receiving how um, the information that you're sharing. But I think y your effort in trying to share information about how MS impacts you is, is important. And, and to be kind to yourself as you do that, because you can only control giving people the information. And that's the right thing to do for the right type of relationships that you need to share. And, um, and you can't control how they receive it. So um, Melissa says she, um, hi, Melissa. I think you're um, the first time you're um, peeked in on the, um, the question box. I save a slide from webinars um, and Facebook and post that to explain symptoms that as well. That's, I think that is great. Um, and sometimes if this is like a, um, a family member or relative, I think it's helpful to, um, to bring them to programs when they get to other, see other um, care providers, et cetera, because um, then they have that in common. So we are going, you can continue to add to that, but I, um, I'm gonna move us um, forward because I'm always committed to keeping us on time. Um, and so um, in the chat box, I, what is something that you would like to say to others um, as we get close to ending tonight? Now this does not give you permission 
to um, to just leave um, because I want you to do the survey and we still need to say goodbye and talk about next um, month's program. But what is something that you would like to um, to say to the group? Um, what is something that's been helpful for you? Or, you know, sometimes we, um, as we wrap up, I um, there you guys are just very um, kind about just um, connecting and wanting to, um, to share. Um, so I just wanted to give you space to do that. Um, Stuart says, um, 2023 in-person events they've had 30 plus they really have had some great programs and so if um if you stay up with um with the msg's and news programs they are it really are just hitting really great locations and um and as many as you can go to um if they're close by i would go to them linda said um take control of what you can and what you can can't attitude is a state of mind so keep focusing on the positive Carol says, take one day at a time, respecting yourself. I love that. That is great. And we'll give you just a, another, um, another minute or two. We'll move on to our next slide, though. And so um, this is the, um, oh, Maddie says, high five, everyone. We've got this. And Wayne says, no matter, um, no matter what, that we are all MS strong. So um, again, I want to thank MS um, Views and News. Without them, we would not have this mental wellness chat, and this me mental wellness chat has been very meaningful for um, for many of us during this time um, during COVID, and has really extended over now that we have virtually um, have more resources than we had before. And it gives us a space to talk about mental wellness and mental health and how MS um, interacts with it, because guess what? It does. We know this. Um, and this is my classic slide that says, not goodbye, but see you later. I don't like goodbyes. Um, I, this is a great resource, and I look forward to um, being back with you as a community next month. And until then, take care of yourself.